December 1, 1977, National Coal Strike may idle 3,000 miners in Knox County and surrounding counties, the United Mine Workers of America strike set for December 6, 1977. The union suspects the strike won't last more than a month or two. 24 more shopping days until Christmas, Merry Christmas Miners. December 2, 1977 Out of Washington, D.C. The coal industry talks contracts getting back on track, the talks aren't going well, and the strike appears a few days away. December 4, 1977, there is no good sight in the coal strike talks in Washington, D.C. Overnight Knox County received about two inches of snow, just to get everyone into the Christmas spirit. Not looking good on December 5, 1977. The union is ready to call its 10th strike in 40 years. Union President Arnold Miller said today, there is no chance of avoiding a nationwide strike set to begin at midnight tonight. Our local miners in Indiana prepare for strike hardship. Out of Duggar the proposed United Mine Workers Strike Tuesday is expected to create financial hardships for Knox County miners and others in Indiana, who they say they're ready to join in nationwide strike if one is called. Local miners fear a lengthy strike would leave them without money for food and home heating. Union boss said the miners are too proud to take handouts or food stamps. He said he would be surprised if five out of the 375 miners in the area would take food stamps. Local miners said they would settle for a $9 a day raise spread over three years, with benefits. Many of the utilities in the state say they expect a strike, and have stockpiled enough coal. Inches of snow, a swirling blowing snowstorm that began late Monday had dumped up to nine inches of new snow by this morning. Wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour buffeted the state during the night, giving an added sting to a new wave of Arctic cold temps. With a 10 degree Fahrenheit, 25 miles per hour winds drove the wind chill factor down to 29 below zero. Many schools are closed today. Strike idols 130,000 coal miners. Half the country's coal production ground to a halt today. In Indiana about 3,000 coal miners walked off their jobs today, joining the nationwide strike, by the United Mine Workers Union. Utilities, schools, hospitals, and other institutions that burned coal began stockpiling supplies when strikes first appeared. As of December 7, 1977, non-union miners started to honor coal strike. Knox County two coal mines have shut down to honor the nationwide United Mine Workers strike. The truckers won't haul coal from the non-union mines. So they have little choice in not honoring the strike. Cold will continue at least to Friday. City and county police investigate four accidents, which was result of ice and snow-covered roads. December 8, 1977, icy roads hinder traffic in area. An early morning rain, mixed with some sleet, and snow, iced over the roads, and slowed or are stopped traffic in the two-county area this morning. Predictions are for a new cover of snow by day's end. For the third day in a row, Knox County Schools and Lawrence County Schools remained closed. But good oven sense schools went today, by Associated Press weather, Midwest has blizzard warnings. Knox County face cold weekend. December 9, 1977, forecast calls for clear skies and icy roads. Counties are on their own for snow removal this year. Governor Bowen announced. In emergencies, the National Guard can help. December 11, 1977, Percy warns of danger in long coal strike. Many predict the strike will last three months. Below zero temperatures, and snow spanned an area from upper Midwest through the Northeast Saturday, and were blamed for at least 44 deaths in five states. Most of the deaths were in Indiana and Illinois. Coal strike violence, Indiana hasn't escaped the violence that has accompanied the six-day-old national coal strike by United Mine Workers. 300 union coal strikers, attacked a non-union coal mine, and a non-union coal dock, in southern Indiana, the state police said. Bulldozer drivers, and the loading dock after they tried to run their cars off the road. December 12, 
1977, cold talks continue and it was the best day had. Top Boy has an evening special from 4 till 11 p.m., cheeseburgers half price, 22 and a half cents, regular 45 cents, Monday through Friday. Located at 517 Broadway, and use our drive-up window. Even, cold talks continue progress may be started towards a settlement. Meanwhile restlessness among the striking miners appear to be rising. Tons of coal were dumped along roads in Kentucky on Monday as some 500 United Mine Workers members invaded Kentucky. Non-union trucks were forced off the road. Forced about 20 truck drivers to abounded their load. The miners also shut down coal loading docks, and slashed tires of some trucks carrying non-union coal. Few area miners try for state aid. December 14, 1977, Lawrence County schools have taken steps to recover some of the days lost recently to bad weather, and slick roads. By cutting Christmas vacation. Knox County schools are not. December 16, 1977 sees Wabash near flood stage, above you are starting to see some of the flooding. December 21st, coal strikers play it rough as farmers start to get tough. Striking coal miners are playing rough as their counterparts in the farm industry are starting to get tough. Miners are setting fires to mine offices, bloodied non-union miners in fist fights. And smashed windows in cars. Many non-unions has aspirations in Kentucky closed Tuesday to avoid trouble with the pickets. The nation's strike entered its third week. December 22, 1977 coal strikers show signs of calm. Coal Miners Union Talks, recessed talks until after Christmas holidays. The scattered violence that has marked the nationwide miners strike also appears to be taking a break. When the strike began December 6 half the nation's coal production stopped. UMW members have been successful in shutting down non-union operations. Farmers have also went on strike, but it's said the strike has little effect on Indiana. Not many farmers participating in the strike here in Indiana. City and county police reported numerous accidents due to the slick roads brought on by Wednesday's light snowfall. December 28, 1977, farmers from three states convoy in Evansville. An estimate 300 farm vehicles forming a six-mile motorcade snaked through Evansville as farmers from three states sought public support for their strike. Police said the motorcade snarled traffic began at Roberts Stadium and went down three main streets to the Civic Center Plaza. Farmers drove three abreast waving at hundreds of onlookers. About 1,500 farmers from southwestern, Kentucky, and Illinois interesting enough they had a parade permit for this. December 29, 1977, farm strikers push cause in Knox County. I don't like the word strike but two words I like less is bankruptcy, and foreclosure. Vigo County Farmer said here Wednesday night. Knox County Union wants state to push U.S. for aid. The Knox County of the Indiana Farmers Union is calling for state action to get the federal government to boost the nation's sagging farm economy. Pact is near say coal union leaders, a settlement in the United Mine Workers strike is near union leaders are predicting. I know our national people are saying it's going to be a long winter, but I really look for a break to be sometime the middle of January. About 3,500 Indiana miners are on strike. Virtually all coal movement has been halted in the state. January 2, 1977. Mine chief may compromise, United Mine Workers President Arnold Miller says he would be willing to compromise on an issue whose resolution could breathe new life into the talks aimed at ending the four-week-old national coal strike. January 4, 1978, miners resort to violence, gunfire, vandalism, and threats are the tools in what appears to be an expanding effort by striking coal miners in five states. The most recent use of gunfire in the four-week strike by 160,000 members of the United Mine Workers came in southern Indiana on Tuesday, a caravan of about 75 vehicles stopped at two mines vandalizing equipment, and shooting guns. Police said no one was hit by any shots. Only equipment was damaged. January 6, 
1978, a farmer's strike office in Colorado is taking pledges from farmers to destroy wheat if the Carter administration doesn't take action to restore parity to farm commodities. Area generates little interest to the national farm strike movement. However local farmers know that momentum is gaining in the area. Police mediate mine closing, sheriff, and state policemen serving as mediators, operators of a southwest striking Indiana coal mine closed it Thursday after negotiating with striking United Mine Workers. Sliding dollar depresses stock market. Several major commercial banks raised prime interest rates Friday, which combines with a continuing slide of the dollar on the world money markets to depress the stock market to its lowest closing level in more than two years. Charlie's Burger Barn, College Plaza Vincennes, Sunday only, Coney's 3 for a buck, located 1012, Washington Avenue, Vincennes, Indiana. I had so many wonderful memories eating at Charlie's Burger Barn. December 8, 1978, the coal strike took a deadly turn. Official of the United Mine Workers Union says the fatal shooting of a retired coal miner is Eastern Kentucky would increase tension in the union's national strike. However the head of the state police believes the shooting may have been unrelated to the strike. Farmers establish strike office in county. Grain flow slows to a trickle in area. Grain elevator operators in Knox County have reported the grain flow has slowed to a trickle during the past week. None of them consider it a result of the nationwide farm strike. Cold weather and shortage of railroad cars for transportation grain rank as the two biggest reasons why the grain traffic is at a crawl. Sympathy for the striking farmers ranks third as a reason for the slowdown. More snow is expected, about an inch of snow fell over the Vincennes area this morning and that's only the beginning. The National Weather Service has predicted at least three more inches of snow through Friday, and possibly Saturday. Area residents can expect the snow to be heavy at times tonight. January 10, 1978, temperatures barely above zero are hard on everyone. Wind gusting at 15 miles per hour, an average 8 miles per hour. Monday wasn't ideal for being outside as city water and sewer department workers, above, discover. They are working at 7th Street and Shelby Street. Workers are from left to right, Tim Griggs, Mark Evans in the hole, and John Roach. Employees of Huffer's Garage survey the situation, as they try to decide how to extricate this ice cream truck from its predicament. The truck jackknifed this morning on US 41 between the Willow and Hart Street exits. The driver said the accident occurred when he swerved to avoid another motorist. Workers were able to salvage the cold cargo by transferring it to another truck. A winter doesn't go by without youths participating in the traditional snow fight. Steve Carkey, 6 Let's Friend Mike Blyce, 7, have a shovel full of snow. Meanwhile Steve's brother, Kevin 10, captures his 9-year-old sister, Lynn, and holds her for a dose of snow. Always fun as Mrs. Charles Meyer, 911 North 8th Street demonstrates, she tries to keep on top of Thursday's snowfall. January 16, 1978, major storm covers area with additional snow. A major storm has blanketed most of the Midwest with snow today. The National Weather Service is St. Louis has predicted 6 to 9 inches of accumulation for that area. Knox County Highway Superintendent Les Prosner reported that county roads are in terrible shape. Every piece of equipment we have is out. Clearing roads of course city schools went an hour late today, we never got out for snow back then. Coal strike forces Bowen to cancel dinner speech. Southern Indiana violence plagued coal fields were also a topic of discussion when 22 Hoosiers Union Mine Workers local leaders met Saturday in Vincennes. Wishful thinking, because the superintendent back then never, ever let us out of school for snow or ice. Wishful thinking prompted a group of Vincennes students to inscribe this message in the snow, in the Fort Knox area. Had the artists been North Knox or South Knox students they would have gotten their wish, but otherwise no. Vincennes Community Schools, Catholic schools, are in session today despite the morning snowstorm. Troy's Restaurant 222 North 6th, Vincennes, 812-882-2122. 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday special, Monday special, ham and beans, all you can eat, $1.70. Tuesday special spaghetti, all you can eat $1.95. Wednesday special, fried chicken all you can eat, $2.25. See our new menu, 6 to 10, Monday through Thursday, open all night Friday to Saturday, 6 to 9 Sunday. That's if you could make it through the snow. January 17, 1978, there is some good news, the dropping temperature has led to a drop in the numbers of reported flu cases in the Knox County area. Knox County Health Officer Ralph Jackman said the colder weather has a positive effect on the number of people suffering from the flu. January 18, 1978, familiar scenes, Jack Blessinger, and Jeff Thompson find themselves doing what a lot of others in the area were working hard at Tuesday, digging their vehicles out of the snow. A neighborhood dog prefers to watch rather than help. A sled comes in handy Tuesday for this woman as she takes home her groceries along 12th Street. Knox and Lawrence, Illinois counties have been virtually paralyzed by the recent snowstorm. Frank Worker, Vincennes Weather Observer, said that 9.5 inches of snow were dumped on the area since 7 a.m. Monday total accumulations now stand at 13 inches according to Worker. All schools are closed this time, including Vincennes University. January 18, 1978, clear skies offer temporary relief, and gave area residents a chance to dig out from the snow. Schools closed today. This says it all. January 19, 1978, area may get four more inches of snow. Wednesday provided area residents with an opportunity to dig out of the snow. The National Weather Service in Indianapolis has forecast 1 to 4 inches of snow today through Friday morning for the area including Knox and Lawrence, Illinois counties. Farmers plan to continue picketing here for three days. Nearly all of the 50 farmers attending voted to continue for three days picketing, this should stop the shipment of grain to and from every county elevator. Respite from snow may end by Sunday. Sunny skies today brought a welcome respite from the wintry weather conditions that have plagued Knox County and most of the nation this week. Better keep those shovels handy. The county schools have been closed for five straight days now. Vincennes schools have been closed for four straight days. A respite from more snow is expected to continue through at least Wednesday in the area according to the National Weather Service. Although snow flurries are expected during this time, generally dry weather will prevail. United Mine Workers strikes 47th day, another negotiating session between the United Mine Workers and coal operators was scheduled for Saturday as the nationwide UMW strike went into its 47th day. In Indiana Governor Otis R. Bowen urged state residents Friday to reduce voluntarily their use of coal and electricity as a common-sense precaution against longer coal strike. A settlement of the coal strike is not in sight. And we must preserve steps to preserve coal stockpiles in Indiana. Any of you remember when the schools shut off unnecessary lights? The hallways were dark. January 23, 1978 City plans snow removal tonight on main streets. Vincennes Street Superintendent Duke Burris has requested that persons not park tonight along certain parts of Main Street because of snow removal operations. Several ways to strike, two faces of the farm strike were seen in this area during the past few days. Two strikers who refused to be identified stood at the switching track near a grain elevator for a day or two. The object was to prevent movement of railroad cars into or out of the elevator. At the same time county roads were filled with snow. Most were barely passable. The farm strike has proved the diversity of the American agriculture, if nothing else. January 24, 1978, on top of everything else we had two murderers in Knox County running loose. However today two suspects were arrested, we all know now they had the wrong guys. Police John Jeffers 17, Washington, and Kenny Shaner 18 who was in the U.S. Army. After years the rightful murders were charged. A light freezing rain made traveling treacherous in Knox County early today. 
Police officials in Knox County reported all roads are ice-covered, slick and hazardous. Road conditions resulted in 28 vehicle accidents. County schools closed, of course city schools are open, and reported the buses running late because of slick roads. January 25, 1978, storm sewer drainage is a problem for area cities. Melting snow and rain, has created scattered drainage problem. January 26, 1978, night blizzard paralyzes region. A howling blizzard with zero temperatures swept through southern Indiana and Illinois Wednesday night, closing all interstates, state highways and county roads throughout the area. Vincennes Mayor Alan Clark and Sheriff Casper Memering declared a snow emergency, asking all county residents to stay inside and travel only for emergencies. Clark is stranded by snow in Indianapolis. The city attorney David Miller is acting on the mayor's behalf. So far this week, Vincennes received about 13 inches of snow. The city police have set up on the edge of town to prevent people from going out on the highway and getting stranded. The police are only answering emergency type of calls. State troopers are traveling in army trucks, and they are having trouble getting around. Duke Burra City Street Department Superintendent said this is terrible, this is the worst I've ever seen. City has been out plowing snow since 4 a.m. A car struck a utility pole and caused some power outage, roads are drifting sometime right after they've been plowed. The National Guard Armory has been open since 10.30 p.m. Wednesday, helping motorists stranded by the blizzard, we've got about 30 people out here stranded and waiting to get out, said Sergeant Ray Miller a National Guard spokesman. The armory will remain open today, and tonight, according to Miller. We'll stay open as long as necessary he said. All emergency calls should go through the sheriff's office he said. All schools in the county are closed. Even Wayne Ader closed the schools for a blizzard, and it's reported they will also be closed tomorrow as well. Everything is closed today. Citizens with four-wheel drive vehicles and snowmobiles and as the people in Alaska call them, snow machines, they are rallying to aid the city and county police officers. Hundreds of stranded motorists and numerous motel employees filled motels in the county. Knox County and Vincennes are holding up pretty well under the snow emergency, according to officials in the city and county police department. Police and road crews are working around the clock to relieve the conditions. A 51-year-old St. Francisville woman who was stranded in the overnight blizzard was found frozen to death this morning by two truck drivers. January 27, 1978, hazardous roads from this week's blizzard have halted most trucking and public transportation in the area. Food suppliers, like E. Beer House and Sons, and Wabash Coffee in Vincennes have been unable to get their trucks to stores since Thursday. Snow and drifting has also plagued railroads. B&O operations were halted Thursday in Vincennes, and it hadn't been decided early this morning if trains would run today. Lincoln High School wrestlers are stranded, 15 wrestlers and two coaches have been stranded at the Albert Pick Motel in Terre Haute since Wednesday night. Wrestling coach, Mark Miller said the 17 persons were crammed into three rooms, and we came without extra clothes, toothbrushes, deodorant, etc., he said, so we're really roughing it. Miller said the team using a van, and a car planned to try, and get home starting 1 or 2 p.m. today. Coping with the blizzard, Vincennes and Knox County were struck as hard as other parts of this area by one of the great storms of this era. In spite of what could have been a natural disaster, the community is coping with the multitude of problems which have been generated by some of the most extreme weather ever seen here. January 29, 1978, area recovers from blizzard, emergency is lifted in the area, most area residents will probably be back to normal routines Monday after being immobilized by a storm that will go down in history as the blizzard of 78. Most roads are still bad and people shouldn't travel on them unless necessary. Mayor Clark made it home from Indianapolis Friday night, Mayor Clark said, I think the city police, firemen, and emergency people have done a very good job. 
all of them are to be commended on handling a bad situation. He also thanked the people of Vincennes for cooperating. It makes the job easier for emergency vehicles and road crews to handle their job. Armory proves haven in emergency it was no Hilton Hotel, but to many of the snowbound travelers who were forced to stay there, the Vincennes National Guard Armory may just as well have been the Taj Mahal. Nearly 70 stranded motorists were forced to seek shelter at the armory after Wednesday blizzard struck the Vincennes area. Few escaped hardships of last week's blizzard. Hoosiers talked about the weather Saturday, endless talk. Snowplow operators talked about the miles of roads they have cleared, and the endless more miles that remain to be scraped of the monumental snowfall, a near-record snowfall in many areas. Indiana National Guard leaders talked about 2,400 persons still stranded in armories after becoming victims of what will for many decades be known as the Great Blizzard of 78. State officials and city officers talked of the many steps government must now take to restore normalcy. Housewives invading just opened groceries asked how could the bread and milk supplies have disappeared so quickly. At least 11 deaths were reported, and undoubtedly will continue officials said. Government closed, interrupted vital services. Factories closed, affecting paychecks. Utilities were strained to near the breaking point. Businesses shut down, losses and damage whose assessment was just beginning, will be astronomical. But the storm is over, and that provides the bright note much needed. Area schools today or early Monday will make decisions about school openings. January 30, 1978, bad news for the city of Vincennes, city is ineligible for snow funds. National Guard, and Red Cross Rescue Local Family. At 2 a.m. Friday, Dorothy Sweeney was preparing to put the last bucket of coal into her stove. It would provide her five-room house with heat for about an hour. After that she could do thing to prevent the snow, and cold from sewing through the cracks in her uninsulated home. Without telephone, and a way of contacting the outside world, she resigned herself to the fact that her rented home, 16 miles south of Vincennes on 6th Street Road would perhaps become a mausoleum for herself. Her three children and a boarder who stayed there. Two hours later, Dorothy Sweeney was sipping hot chocolate at the National Guard Armory. Comfortable in her knowledge that she and her children though chilled to the bone, had been rescued. A combined team of National Guardsmen, and Red Cross volunteers led by a tractor operator by local sawmill owner John Ford. Waged a seven-hour battle with six to eight foot snow drifts to reach Mrs. Sweeney, and her family. January 31, 1978, utilities face low coal supplies, area asked to cut back electricity use. Most area power companies are asking people to begin voluntary cutbacks of energy consumption in the wake of the seven-week-long coal strike, and recent frigid weather conditions. The lack of adequate stockpiles of coal could eventually force the closings of some schools, and certain work in factories if striking mine workers does not soon reach agreements with the mine owners. Knox County like other areas, face more cold. People in Knox County can expect little or no relief from low temperatures though the end of the week. An extended forecast for the area calls for mostly dry and continued cold. Low temperatures are predicted between 0 and 10 degrees with highs in the upper teams, and low 20s. Another inch of snow fell in the area overnight. The effects of last week's blizzard, and continued cold have left the streets and roads in the two county area snow and ice covered. Indiana areas face possible cuts in power. Indiana Top Utilities is warning of possible power reductions while federal and utility officials say that mandatory power curtailments might be unavoidable in many eastern and midwest states. A combination of frigid weather and the national coal strike have resulted in dangerously low levels in coal inventories. City to buy two more snow blades. The following photos and information was taken from the 1978 Lincoln High School yearbook. Mayor Alan Clark studies Vincennes as it relates to Indiana's energy crisis. Darkened halls, and dimly lit classrooms marked the 1978 energy crisis during a 110-day coal strike, Governor Otis Bowen, 
and Public Service Commission requested a 50% reduction of electrical power usage. Lincoln responded, and foyer lights were turned off. Hallways, offices, and some classrooms used lights only during the first hour of school. Clock watchers were frustrated when their pastimes was unplugged. Vocational classes were hardest hit. The home economics cooking and baking courses suffered as substitute activities were initiated. The use of sewing machines was greatly reduced, and teachers took laundry home to eliminate use of school washers and dryers. In the industrial arts department two electric welding booths were used instead of the seven available, and emphasis was placed on gas welding, cutting, and drawing. The business departments reverted to the 1960s style teaching with battery-operated calculators, mechanical typewriters, and business machines. The art department suffered the loss of the kill used for firing ceramics, and clay products while teachers, and staff personnel unplugged coffee pots, and soft drink machines, and went back to the old thermos jugs. The threat or promise of closing schools hovered in the air as basketball games were postponed. Some few were played in the afternoon without lights. Consequently, the athletics department noticed a loss of money as ticket sales dropped, and the Indiana High School Athletics Association tournament ran into the middle of April, and shortened the baseball season. The energy crisis generated an awareness for power conservation and an after much ado, readied for an emergency power plant. Lincoln students, and administration proved they can rally together to meet the need of the country. It's better to do with less than to do without. February 1, 1978, overnight forecast calls for 2 to 3 inches of snow, it isn't the best of forecast. Cold talks will resume, federal mediators are keeping in contact with both sides in the national coal strike. The coal situation is becoming dire. With the colder temperatures, most homes and businesses will be relying on energy to heat their buildings and homes. The state leaders and power plants are asking people to reduce their energy consumption, or there may not be any energy to use. Lack of coal in the state have closed some schools. Coal strike settlement may be near, this is good news, however they have been reporting this for weeks. It's becoming very important to get these coal miners back to work. This has been the longest coal strike in history, the most recent one lasted 59 days. The photo above is Derek Madison, 6 years old of 302, Bowman Terrace makes sure his snowman is comfortable. Weather forecasts indicate the snowman could be around a long time, Derek is the son of Cheryl Madison. The coal strike is getting serious, schools are closing, but not in Vincennes. The city is doing its part. One thing they are doing is turning off the street lights. The city police will beef up their patrols because of this. Coal loaded trucks pass through Vincennes today, heavily guarded by the Indiana National Guard and Indiana State Police. This is a must, as striking miners have been shooting at the non union coal trucks and sometime hijacking them. To reduce energy consumption, downtown stores have cut back on store hours. To reduce energy consumption, many Indiana schools will go to a four-day week. More than 100 workers are affected in the area. The mandatory energy reductions of 25% have forced layoffs at two Vincennes manufacturing plants, and postponed the reopening of a third. Post office shortens hours to reduce energy consumption. More than 10,000 workers laid off because of the coal strike, Reducing energy usage has forced many businesses to close. Coal strike has cost the state of Indiana millions of dollars. As of today February 28, 1978, the coal strike has reached its 85th day. With only promises and hope that it will end soon. Striking miners prepare to vote, to end the strike or not. Local miners in the area are the first to turn down the deal to end the strike. President Jimmy Carter invokes the Taft-Hartley Act. This afternoon on March 6, 1978. Seeking to convince striking coal miners to return to work, after three months strike, because the country cannot afford to wait any longer. However the miners will refuse the order to return to work, extending the coal strike. 
and putting more pressure on the state and country. As of March 8, 1978, the coal strike is now 93 days old. As energy consumption is reduced, no end in sight for the coal strikes. Cold weather still plagues Vincennes. Overnight Vincennes suffered a freezing rain, causing damage to trees, and power lines. Power failure hits Vincennes. A substation or power line problem may have caused the blackout that hit Vincennes and surrounding areas this morning March 9, 1978. Public Service Indiana plans power disconnection to some. P.S. I will soon be forced to shut off power service to firms and schools that are not complying with the state-ordered power reductions. President Carter using his power and authority to force miners back to work isn't working itself. The miners just flat out refuse to submit. March 28, 1978 brings great news, miners going back to work, the end of a very memorable winter for me. This was my senior year in high school, the blizzard was the most memorable thing in my memory now that I'm 62 years old. That's because it affected my days of going to school, days I could spend with my girlfriend, that of this year 2021 will be married 40 years. The dark hallways were interesting, and dimmed classrooms. The winter of 78 was one of the most memorable times of my life, until the pandemic of 2020 came along. I hope you enjoyed the look back to the blizzard of 78, and the other problems we had to deal with, thank you for watching.